Dear friends of Ortolino, hello, my name is Dieter Manchura and I am the owner and manager of Ortolino Company. Today I want to tell you a little bit more about these wonderful Tibetan carpets uh, from Nepal. I want to speak a little bit about the origins and the materials used and the techniques used. Uh, research on Tibetan carpets set in so roughly in the 1960s. And in the beginning, researchers thought that the, the tradition of making Tibetan carpets is not older well, than early 19th century. Today, we know that this is fundamentally wrong. The tradition of making Tibetan carpets is at least a thousand years old, maybe even older. We know that today from old Sanskrit uh, documents that were found in, in Tibet. And in these documents, um, carpets were mentioned. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the materials for Tibetan carpets. Sheep wool is used. Um, before, it was the wool of the sheep from the Himalayan highlands. As most carpets, Tibetan carpets, are made in Nepal today, uh, mostly wool from New Zealand and Australia is used, which is pretty good too. Uh, but there are also the, the Tibetan carpets made in India. Uh, those usually compete on price and the quality of the wool is usually lower. Sometimes it's even mixed with jute. Okay, then, um, other materials are necessary for the warp and weft. Uh, for these, up to roughly early 20th century, also wool was used. Um, but then it was replaced by, by cotton. Cotton is more resilient and, and stronger than, than wool. Not everything that is old is automatically better. Okay, then um, a few words about the knotting technique. The Tibetans use a completely different uh, technique of, of knotting, of weaving, well then the technique that is used for the Persian carpets or the Turkish carpets. So in the world, I basically have three knotting techniques, the Persian uh, knot, the Turkish knot, and the Tibetan knot, uh, which is called Sena uh, knot. The Tibetan way allows um, a thicker tuft and the weaving is more efficient meaning, okay, you can create such a carpet faster compared to a Persian uh, carpet. Well, then a few words about the dyeing stuff. Until roughly the, the end of the 19th century, uh, natural dyes were used. Well, that the ingredients for these natural dyes came from minerals and, and from plants. And by the end of the 19th century, then uh, synthetic colors were imported from India. Uh, today, nearly exclusively synthetic colors are used. There was a short renaissance of natural dyes in the early 1980s. However, uh, the intensity of the colors and the variety of colors is limited for, for natural dyes. Okay, then um, a few words about the typical sizes. The typical sizes of a traditional, or emphasis on, is on traditional Tibetan carpets is what you can see here, uh, roughly 90 by 180 centimeters, uh, which is roughly 3 by 6 feet. Um, and smaller. The Tibetans used these carpets um, for sleeping uh, or for
for sitting. Um, it, it was their bed, you can say, therefore such a size of three by six feet is ideal um, as a replacement uh, for a bed of the kind we know it. Okay, let me conclude by mentioning our next online auction in which you can purchase one of these wonderful Tibetan carpets. Our next auction will start on February 22 at 8 p.m. our local time here in beautiful Bavaria, uh, which is Central European time. We are six hours ahead of New York. That means it starts at 2 p.m. in New York and it will end on February 25, also at 8 p.m. our local time. Today, thank you for watching and have a good week. Goodbye.